one eternity later. Data transfer complete. <gasps> Are we done? Are we done? Ah, oh, finally. Oh my god, that took so long. I fell a little asleep there. Hey, I'm Double Archangel. Welcome to my channel. This is the second video of this week. You know, back in the day, when we used these modems called 56K, uh, dial-up modems, it took forever to do anything online. These days, we think of something, we write it down and and it's there, right away, right? But back in the day, some 20 years ago, when I still was a teen, when you wanted music, for example, or a video, or, well, YouTube didn't exist back then yet, or at least it was very, very small. Anyway, uh, videos as movies or whatever took forever to download. It was like, it took over the night. You, you put something to download the next day, the, the day before. And then it took over the night to get that specific one and a half hour or two hour movie, whatever. You know, it took forever. Anyway, this time around, this video, uh, that is my second one in this week, as I promised. A little late, sorry for that. I had a lot of problems with both physically, uh, with my back, and also getting stuff done in the studio, like the last cleanups and so on. And, well, getting back to actual client work. Anyway, this week's time-lapse in this second video is based on an old meme where you wait for something so long you turn into a skeleton. So this poor ICT fellow or IT fellow has been left somewhere by his colleagues uh, waiting for a download. And uh, basically he's still there waiting to get that download done. Anyway, this was something I made in between client jobs and it took about two hours to make, so it's a pretty basic Photoshop uh, manipulation for me. It doesn't have that many uh, pictures in it and the composition is quite easy to make. So I thought that why not make the voiceover a small tutorial. So I hope you guys enjoyed this 10 minute tutorial in how I made this one and I will also try to make it more um, neutral so that you can take the techniques from this video and use in whatever concept and in whatever art you form you like. Uh, hopefully it helps you get better and make awesome art. Why not share those too? Anyway, if you guys like these videos, please don't forget to like and subscribe, share the videos with friends and uh, give it a thumbs up if you like it and ring the bell to get noticed when I get these videos out again. Because from next week forward, it starts to roll on uh, normally again because there's no more construction in, in this studio. You can find more of my art on Instagram, double R underscore art angel, or in Deviant Art as double archangel. I hope you enjoyed this one as well, even though it's quite a quickie for me, because I promised two videos and, well, I deliver what I promise. However, I'm sorry if this is not quite up to the level of 
other videos that I have done before. It's 10 minutes long anyway and a uh, short tutorial. So yeah, let's begin. Okay, so let's not waste any time. So I started to do this picture with uh, choosing subject and the background being this retro 80s old factory or whatever and uh, uh, basically a guy that sits at a computer. Uh, I started to warp his position uh, to be accurate to the chair and then after that I started to mask out the things that were supposed to be outmasked so basically the guy because well we wanted to be a skeleton right I started to with a spine and his skull and adjusted them by warping them in the in the layer uh, keeping the mask disabled for now and uh, getting the right idea where to put these. Then I started to fill out the, the areas behind his hand that I have masked away and uh, used the clone step tool that is very good uh, for these kind of measurements and these kind of uh, edits to do. There's no rules in not using the, the tools that Photoshop has and makes it itself like the content fill tool is really good it doesn't do a, a ready job but it does do help a lot and uh, adding a color, a color on the other side of his color. So I basically make him hollow, so that the skeleton that I'm placing later on fits perfectly inside this composition. And I, I keep the spine visible all the time to keep the, the right position uh, until I'm in a place where I know I can mask it out and then uh, make the skull right position also. After this I add uh, as an overlay uh, a bunch of cogwebs and uh, I have basically taken a lot and lot of pictures of cogwebs and then just uh, added them on, uh, on this uh, transparent background checker kind of background and uh, to be able to use them as overlays of course you can find stocks also that are similar similar to these cog babes, but I really like love these ones. I have lots and lots of these that are different shapes and sizes. As a tip, I separate the areas uh, by blending everything in order. So I make the background really dark from the beginning because I thought that the only light source in this actual composition will be the computer screen. The second tip is uh, how you should really learn how to use the pen tool. I mean, you don't have to use it, but it helps so much. And an easy way, I think, to learn how to use it is uh, starting off in Illustrator, making vector shapes, uh, because that's basically the pen tool. And the uh, computer screen I'm making after this, and uh, by using a retro font and Making a simple shape 
layer that I'm making a download icon inside of it and um, then adding overlays with uh, with help of color color layers actually that I use as the luminance instead of a hue and saturation layer because I want a more fluorescent color in this piece and uh, all over you have saturation layer the colors are more subtle they are more from some kind of light source than an actual fluor color this is just a tip also to instead of use the hue and saturation if you want a really poppy color like a, a real a, a color that you see really well use use a color layer and uh, mask out the areas first firstly you mask out the whole color and then you fill the areas that you think uh, will be hit by the light source and that's what i'm doing right now so i'm using a sharp brush almost no opacity and uh, just bringing forth the shapes with this very 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 saturated green fluor fluorescent color. After this I decided to do the same with all the rest of the uh, things in the room. The whole scene is gonna be lit up but I decided that the background is gonna be dark. Very very dark. And uh, this is a little thing that I added. A little mirroring of the skeleton or of the person in the in the screen because old screens aren't flat they are round and uh, a round area does reflect really well actually uh, and you can't even recognize it in the picture if you don't know it but well now you got to know it and I, I like to add some small things here and there Adding a shadow behind the layer by copying the original layer, uh, masking it out and then in the mask using a white brush or a light grey brush to get it back. Bringing forth a little of the more of the luminance from the screen I've made uh, just simply by taking masking away of the the darkness from the background. Adding some some highlights now. I'm also using uh, both a hue and saturation layer and uh, a second layer of uh, color, fluorescent green color, and making edges pop more to give that radioactive feel, that old school computer feel. These stock pictures were all found on unsplash.com and then what over elements. So I decided to add a little more of the color with a, I think it's an overlay or a light layer and um, to the actual cogwebs and also by doing the same technique, masking out the, the color fully and then bringing it back with uh, a white brush. And uh, when I'm done with all the light sources, I start adding shadows. Uh, basically on the opposite side, all the luminant parts. Except for I'm bringing a little forth the, the cogwebs uh, with the help of Blendif.
ending with a camera raw filter and uh, to change the values of the colors to make it more satisfying for the eyes and uh, enhancing my style in the artwork. This is of course optional. 